SCP-105 Iris SCP Animation, the rubber. Uh, let's get into it. Shout out the rubber. Yeah, let's, let's see. This is actually the same one that I'm pretty sure that Taylor Foundation just did. I don't, I don't get it, and I don't understand how do, how do people like, what's up, Mar? How do people like? How do y'all do the same SCPs in the same week? Like how I work? I don't know. It's crazy to me when they do that. Cozy, did you see? I'm finna make a meme compilation for you. If you don't laugh, I'm gonna throw it back. <laughs> for real? Yo, 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 for sure. Do that. Do that, bro. Do that. Do that, bro. All right, let's play the video, bro. Discretion is advised. She opened the bottle and shook a huge pile of capsules into her hand. Can we link a suggested link for a video, Cozy? Nah, you gotta do it in the Discord view suggestion. My name is Iris Thompson. Minutes later, her stomach churned in rebellion. Her pulse quickened. Hello, everybody. I'm the rubber. Hey, rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Safe Class Object SCP-105. Appreciate the follow, Izzy. SCP-105, formerly known as Iris Thompson, is a female human of European descent, but born in Phoenix, Arizona. She is petite with long blonde hair and blue eyes. SCP-105-B is a Polaroid one-step express camera, manufactured in 1982. When 105 holds a photograph taken by 105-B, the photograph changes from a still image to that of a real-time image. 105 possessed the capability to reach through the photograph and manipulate objects within reach of the original point at which the photograph was taken. 105B and the photographs it produces do not possess any unusual properties when operated by any other individual. DJ, if I have the power, I would give you this SCP, but I do not have the power, bro. This is actually a pretty fire SCP, too. 105 had demonstrated a limited ability to manipulate objects through other photographs, but can only achieve fine control using photographs taken through 105B. 105 was brought to the Foundation's attention shortly after the murder of her boyfriend. 105 claimed to have been on the phone with him at the time of his murder, prompting her to hurry to his side. However, telephone records did not support or align with her story. With that, she became the primary suspect in his murder. 105 informed her lawyer that she had, in fact, witnessed the murder through a photograph she had taken with her boyfriend several days prior. The attorney in question disregarded the story and recommended that the subject plead guilty. 105 refused to do so and subsequently told her story in court, offering to demonstrate her ability. This led to her being immediately contained by the Foundation. 105 was the second humanoid SCP recruited to Mobile Task Force Omega-7 under the Pandora's Box initiative. Unlike Team Abel, associated with SCP-076-2, which was assigned to strike and <laughs> capture operations, That's how I'd be kicking niggas in Apex. <laughs> Team Iris had the primary mission of reconnaissance and intelligence gathering. Team Iris carried out over 20 missions in cooperation with the Bow Commission, swiftly and without incident. The first disciplinary incident involving 105 involved the escalation of Team Iris missions from reconnaissance to wet work. 105 <laughs> wet work. <laughs> violently opposed the use of her abilities to carry out assassinations, even after members of the Bow Commission repeatedly attempted to secure her cooperation. During these events, 105 became emotionally distressed and attempted to deceive Foundation personnel into believing that her anomalous traits mm -hmm. had disappeared. A Foundation professor submitted a report recommending that 105 be reclassified as neutralized. In addition, the report recommended that 105 should undergo amnestic treatment and be released to the public with regular monitoring. However, the recommendation was denied. Following this, all Mobile Task Force Omega-7 teams were disbanded, and 105 was implanted with a tracking device. 105 was housed at Site-17, while 105B was contained in a locked safe deposit box at Site-19's high-value item storage facility. It had been 68 days since the guard posted to her door. Now was the time. She studied the picture closely.
My fault, y'all. I heard somebody snoring. It's my parents. <laughs> the fuck? Sleep. She remembered it as a photograph of Dr. Whitman and an unnamed secretary, lost to time and staffing reorganization, drunk in the manner that office workers always seem to... Uh, rubber remind you of that Christmas, huh? ...reserved for Christmas parties. She recalled the bright yellow, level 3 staff-only sign that adorned many rooms in the facility, partially obscured by the Happy Holidays sign. Above this sign was a stained air vent. Without breathing, she looked at the photograph. It now featured only a door in a brightly lit corridor. No sign of Dr. Whitman and the insensate secretary remained. Only the entrance to the Site 17 Pharmacological Dispensary. She smiled. Jackpot. 105 gingerly moved her hand into the photograph. As she neared the door's electronic keypad, she recited the mnemonic that she'd kept in her head for two months after overhearing a chance conversation in passing between two security techs. Four years in Site 17. She touched four on the keypad. Fifteen dead in Operation Milk Run. She entered a one and a five. One plus zero plus five is six. She entered a six. The year of mom and dad's wedding. Nigga, what is this random ass code? What are you talking about? The nigga said applesauce is green, so the number must be four. She entered an eight and a seven. Attempt number. Upon entering the three, a green light flashed above the door handle. How? And the deadbolt sharply clicked open. Nigga. 105 pushed open the door. Barely distinct now, shelves laden with bottles, boxes, and plastic bags beckoned. Her elbow was now past the photograph's threshold, and she reached as far as she dared into the pharmacy. She picked up a plastic bottle that had 200 capsules of orphanodrine. She opened the bottle and shook a huge pile of capsules into her hand. She noticed the designation on her fluorescent yellow tracking wristband, SCP-105. She closed her hand around the pills. Uh, what? What is she about to do? Nigga did all that for some pills? My name is Iris Thompson. Minutes later, her <laughs> stomach churned in rebellion. Her pulse quickened. Whoa! My name is Iris Thompson. Thompson. Bro, what is this video? The bottle fell from her grasp, and suddenly the cement floor rose. And niggas say this shit for kids. Whoa, hold on, y'all niggas bugging it. To meet her silently and without feeling, she passed out on the floor. For a moment, she thought her suicide attempt was a success. She awoke in a plush, high-backed chair. As her eyes dickhead. adjusted to the dim light in the room, she noticed a grand piano in the far corner behind her. She uncomprehendingly took in her elegant surroundings, putting her hands to her face as if to reassure herself she still existed. Please, there's no need to get up just yet. Iris was startled by the voice behind her. As she turned, she saw an older, heavyset man with a mop of gray hair and a bushy white beard. He That's wore an orange jumpsuit, much the same as hers. The customary ID number stenciled over the heart, read, SCP-343. Something's not right. I I'm in here, but I get the feeling I'm still in Site 17. Are you that guy that the guards talk about? The one everyone wants to go visit? If you're him, I can't understand why you didn't just pop me into your cell to talk to me earlier. Dale scratched his beard. It's not quite as simple as that. I perceive many things, Iris. What appears to the staff here as parlor tricks and miracles is merely movement in other forms. She poured herself a glass of water. What, like other dimensions? Dale pulled a slightly sour looking face. I dislike that term. It makes me sound like a horrible Flash Gordon villain. But yes, I move in worlds stacked on top of this one, as do you, though you don't know that yet. She considered Dale carefully. What don't I know yet? The old man leaned closer. What? <laughs> Let me stop, bro. You poor girl. Many things. The good news is that you are no mere curiosity with a penchant for photography. 
That parlor trick is just that, a trick. Dale turned back towards her. Have you ever considered that looking at pictures was simply a focal point? Perhaps it was just a way to wrap your mind around something that, in your world, should not be? She opened her mouth to answer. No, surely not. You are something far more otherworldly and dangerous than they suspect. The potential you have to wreak changes on the realms around you is far in excess of what could be expected by man or God. However, your mind, or what will become of your mind, or what's left of it, is ill-suited to such circumstances. Whatever fills this wonderful little facility with invisible treasures seems to have seen fit to play a particularly complex joke on you. Whatever you started out as, you are far less human than they suspect, than you yourself suspect. Her face turned red. So, okay. So does that mean she has more abilities? Because, like, clearly she OD'd, but it didn't work. So does that mean she have other stuff that she has yet to unlock? Okay. 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 All right. Her hands balled up into fists. That's not what it's like. Everyone suspects, but I'm the only one who really knows. And none of you ever ask me. They'd rather run their tests, write their reports, and then go home like it doesn't matter. Tears came to her eyes as she turned to face the old man. Why am I here with you, anyway? I never did anything to anyone. I even helped them with that psycho with the tattoos. Less than human, you don't know me. She buried her face in her hands, ashamed and once again unable to control the situation. I'm not like the rest of you. I can choose to be more than that. Dell pulled himself up to his full height. Your presence here has inspired a need for forgiveness that even hard people like the Foundation require. Due to what you are, there was little danger of you fully accomplishing what you set out to do. But you've managed to really hurt yourself this time. You've triggered something. What you have done is set events in motion far more than a single death could have accomplished. You, the Foundation, and even I are all about to be freed from the illusion of control that shackles each and every... A beeping sound came from the old man's wrist. He checked his Casio digital watch. Ah, my manners. Time's up. With that, he snapped his fingers. And in an instant... Nigga was in a lunch meeting? Like, <laughs> the kid, like, finished the story, my guy? <laughs> Iris awoke in a hospital bed. Fortunately, her suicide attempt had been a failure. Because of the security risk she represents and lack of current utility, SCP-105 is no longer allowed access to SCP-105-B. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before Alright, alright, okay. That was, you know what I'm saying? I would like to have heard the end of the story, but... Nice, 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 nice,